Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to teach you how to make your audio sound better. Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to teach you how to make your audio sound better. Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to teach you how you can edit your audio in Adobe Audition and how to make your voice sound better. So I've been making tutorials for around five years now. So I've been using these same settings for five years. I wasn't always using Adobe Audition, I was using Audacity. So if you're looking for a free alternative, I would check that out. It'll be in the description. And today I'm going to be teaching you how you can make your voice sound a lot better with Audacity. Audacity is a, like a voice recording program and you can edit stuff there. So all you want to do is go on to audacityteam.org slash download. I'll leave that in the description. But because I already paid for the Adobe subscription, I thought I would just use it. There's also a way to speed up your workflow by using Adobe Audition if you also use Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm going to show you presets that Swerve Tutorials actually made. I did not come up with these presets he did. Uh, I watched a video of his four years ago and that's what I've been using since. I'm going to leave all the settings in the description and on screen so that you guys can see. You guys can pause the video whenever. And I'm just going to show you some tips and tricks that I found out over the years. So if you guys enjoy, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. And with that being said, let's get straight into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to record just an audio snippet. It could be whatever. So you can actually press shift space to do this instead of pressing on the red button. I just find it's easier. Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to teach you how to edit your audio. So right now my laptop fan is going off typically during recording videos. For some reason it just gets louder. So if you cannot hear it right now, it's because I've edited that audio out. So I'm just going to show you the three settings that I use. And once again, shout out to Swerve Tutorials. So we're going to go on here. We're going to go to filter and EQ. We're going to use graphic equalizer 20 bands. And then we're going to go back and we're going to use parametric equalizer. And the last one is amplitude and compression hard limiter. So I'm not 100% sure what each of these do. I'm not like a music guy. Uh, but what I will say is these settings turn a flat piece of audio into like some crazy audio, some crisp audio. So I'm going to apply one by one so that you guys can sort of get a gist of uh, what each of them do. So I actually made a preset for it. So it's called audio. And so once again, I'll put it on screen. So let's just go with graphic equalizer right now. I'll delete the other two. So before you actually apply the effect, you can hear how it sounds with the effect. I'm going to play the before actually. Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to teach you how to make your right. You hear that? So we're going to add equalizer, graphic equalizer. Hey guys, Steven here back with another video. And so it's, it's very subtle. You can't even hear it. Um, I think the thing that makes it really, really change is this, the parametric equalizer. So we're going to add that. Hey guys, Steven here back with another video. Hey guys, Steve it almost adds more depth to your audio. You probably can't even tell. Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to teach you how and the last thing is hard limiter. So a little tip, you can turn these on and off if you want. Green is on. Hey guys, Steven here back. So hard limiter makes it a little bit louder and it makes it cap at a certain volume. Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to teach you. So there's a big difference and it's not really just volume. It's just how clear you hear the audio. So once you're done, you can press apply. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to remove background noise. There's not a lot in this one. You can see there's no spikes and there's really no audio. You can see here without zooming in this part, maybe that's probably like my mouse click, but basically you want to highlight a portion of your video where you're not talking. And I found that it's better to highlight a smaller area than a big area. So I'm going to stick with this. We're going to go to effects, noise reduction and capture noise print. So this is going to essentially capture a noise reference. So they know what is the background noise and then they're going to remove it. So we're going to go back and we're going to press noise reduction now and we're going to apply preset. So it's 89% and reduced by 11 decibels. So now I'm going to play it. Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to teach you how to edit your audio. So there, that's basically the tutorial. I'm just going to show you some small, small, small tips and tricks. The first one is when you import any audio into Adobe Premiere Pro, if you use it, typically for me, it's going to be like a screen recording. So let me just find one with audio. So this one has audio, right? So you can see it's not really that loud. You can see the audio levels don't even reach the top, but basically you can right click and press edit clip in Adobe Edition. 
So it's render and replacing. And it'll actually open in Adobe Audition. So you can see this is extracted. When it says extracted, it basically extracts it from Premiere Pro and puts it here. And you can apply the effects right here. And once you save it, it'll automatically appear in your timeline. So it essentially syncs what you do on Adobe Audition on Premiere Pro, which I find very helpful. The next tip I have is for replacing audio. So let's just say you don't sync the audio. So you don't use Adobe Audition and Premiere Pro sync feature. And let's just say you have this piece of audio, right? So you go and edit the audio and then you make cuts to the audio. So let's just say we make random cuts. And then you go back to Adobe Edition and you realize, oh, I should have applied this effect. I forgot to apply this effect or this doesn't sound right. What you can do instead of resetting the whole cutting process. So instead of going back to normal and making it uncut, you can actually go to the audio clip in your project manager and right click and press replace footage and it'll replace the footage with your new audio clip. As long as they're the same length, your cut clips won't be affected. So typically this happens when I'm recording a tutorial video and I forget to add noise reduction or something like that. And I've already cut the clips. All I have to do is go back to Adobe Edition, apply the noise reduction, export it, and then replace the footage. And I don't have to do anything other than that. The next tip, it has to do with audio levels. So when I play it, I record like a test sample. You can see it's like around the orange level. You do not want it to hit red or that's just very loud. I've uh, tested this on different devices. And if you listen to like any audio that hits red, so around zero right here with headphones, it's just extremely loud and it's just not what most videos sound like. So you want to keep it around the yellow mark. And the way you sort of maintain consistency with like volume is you want to be the same distance from your mic at all times. So mine's like right in front of my mouth. Yours doesn't have to be. Also, if you go and right click on the volume setting right here, and go to open sound settings. So this is for Windows. It's going to be different for Mac. If you go in device properties, mine's always at 75. If I do it at 100, it picks up way too much audio, especially because my mouth is right in front of my microphone. So it's always at 75. And you also want to take in mind what it sounds like with background music as well, like how loud that would be. So I'm going to export this clip and then add background music. So let's just import it right here. Hey guys, Steven here back with another video. So right now it's at yellow. So I have this uh, music clip right here. You can play it. You can see this one reaches red because it is music. It is louder than me talking. So what I usually do is I'll right click and press audio gain and I'll decrease it around negative 30 to negative 40. So I'm going to do negative 35. Hey guys, Steven here back with another video. And today I'm going to teach you how to make your audio. And this is usually the perfect sweet spot for me. Uh, I never make it any louder than negative 30 and never quieter than negative 40. So I would check the audio levels if they ever are in the red area. I think I think other than that, you're pretty much good to go. And the last thing I'm going to show you is just how to save a preset. So when you actually apply the settings, so let's just say you're doing delay. So let's just say you have a custom setting. So right now it says custom because it doesn't follow any of the presets, but you want to just make your own presets. So press save settings as and then you can just name it. And yeah, that's about it for this tutorial. As for my gear, I'll leave it in the description. I use the Rode NT-USB microphone for one reason, really. It's the best USB microphone I found. There are XLR microphones, but you'll need like an additional setup for it. And I didn't really wanna buy additional stuff or have to have a huge setup. So that's why I chose this microphone. I also have a stand for it. As for the one I use for my camera, I used to use the Video Mic Pro and put it on top of my camera. But what I found is lav microphones do much better. And there's one by Rode that I use. It's a lav mic. So I'll leave that as well. I think it's around the same price. If you can't afford that, I'll put another cheap alternative in the description. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and let me know if you learned anything from this video. Uh, once again, shout out to Swift Tutorials for helping me out with this. And yeah, uh, my name's Steven and I'll see you in the next one.